Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All praise be to the Almighty, the most generous, the most merciful. May the peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to a special webinar, another one, uh, from the Association of Muslim Schools on the recently revised guidance uh, from the DFE. Behaviour in schools, advice for head teachers and school staff. My name is Hasina and many of you will know me already. I am a member of the Shura of the Association uh, uh, of Muslim Schools and for the next hour and a half or so, I'm going to be taking you through some of those key um, changes and updates that we are um, now in receipt of in the revised guidance. Uh, the changes are significant. Um, and the number of pages um, in the document uh, in, in themselves uh, will tell you um, how important behaviour now is for schools. Um, we've gone from 14 pages in the previous guidance to um, nearly 35 pages in the revised version. There are um, explicit references to the responsibility of independent schools and um, as if you've already attended our attendance webinar um, you will see as I go through uh, this presentation that there are very direct links with attendance um, and so the two are very much interlinked. Before I begin to uh, share with you uh, those changes and the responsibility upon schools um, under this new guidance or the revised guidance, um, one of the, the key uh, additions uh, to um, the document comes right at the beginning and this is something that we find in keeping children safe so the terms must and should um, are found throughout the guidance, just as they are in keeping uh, children safe. And they've included the importance of using those terms in the behaviour guidance. Um, as you will all know, uh, as leaders, that the term must, must be used uh, or is used when the person in question is legally required to do something. And the term should is used uh, when the advice is set out and should be followed unless there is good reason not to. OK, so that's something really important that I want to share with you right at the very beginning of this of this webinar. Um, and so it's important that you are aware um, as we move through. So what's changed and why? Um, the DfE actually has updated a number of guidance documents, um, guidance documents with changes uh, related to behaviour. And um, they come into effect for our schools from the 1st of September. Um, those documents are behaviour in schools, advice for head teachers and school staff. That's what we're looking at in this webinar today. Searching, screening and confiscation advice for schools. Um, we're hoping, uh, inshallah, that the AMS will be giving you some, some, uh, some guidance on this in a separate webinar um, shortly. And so school suspensions and permanent exclusions, very much written for the mainstream sector, but you will find some very helpful um, information within it. Um, these updates follow on from the Timpson review of school exclusions in the case of Char Q, uh, where a pupil was strip searched without parental consent. And, um, and actually, I think that it, what it's done, um, this, the, the revised guidance, I've got uh, um, an image for you on the screen there, is that it's really given much more information, much more extensive information for leaders of schools. Um, and made very clear what's required of you um, as you as you develop the ethos um, in your schools. This is a document that's now been replaced, so uh, not to be referred to. And the last time uh, we've had some some amendments, but uh, January 2016 is the one that has now been replaced. Um, a summary at the very start of this webinar is that the DfE provides now very detailed guidance, as I've said, on what effective behaviour management looks like. And that includes the role of staff in supporting good behaviour. It's made explicitly clear 
how to support a pupil after a sanction. Um, again, there's some very explicit guidance on, on, on what schools should be doing. Um, as we've seen in attendance and we've seen with keeping children safe, um, there is a real heightened focus on children with special educational needs and disabilities, and this document is no different. Uh, so uh, we will be looking at a section of the document where it refers to the management of behaviour uh, of pupils who are uh, classed as being um, special educational needs or with a disability. Responding to specific behaviour issues, there is much more guidance on this. The behaviour policy, like we had a very, very um, brief account of what should be in a behaviour policy in the previous guidance. It is much more extensive and um, I'm going to go through this in, in, in quite some detail. And that will require you to update your behaviour policy um, quite substantially. Um, and I'm going to be posing questions throughout this webinar on really actually as a school, as leaders, have you really gone uh, to the extent that that's now required under uh, this document? Extensive guidance on removing pupils from classrooms and the steps that you as uh, leaders of your schools um, should take when using this sanction. Again, there is more information on detentions and uh, what needs to be considered. So good behaviour in schools is crucial to a good education. Um, in our schools, the importance of developing children as a clerk and their behaviour is, is fundamental to the work that we do. And so really, you know, it shouldn't give us um, any, any worries about why this needs to be core to our work. Um, and subhanAllah, alongside the work that you do as a school, it, there should be constant referencing to the teachings of, um, of those um, of those qualities required of us um, through the teachings of Quran and Sunnah. Schools need to manage behaviour effectively so that they can provide calm, safe and supportive environments where young children, uh, where young people and children want to be. And that's that reference to attendance and where they can learn and thrive. Um, I've highlighted the, the word safe here because this is the first time we're going to come across it but it comes repeatedly throughout the document and so again there is a real focus on creating an environment where children feel safe um, and that heightened expectation is something that as school leaders you really must consider that are all opportunities being given to children are all uh, procedures within the school ensuring that children feel that feel safe and calm in, in the school environment. Being taught how to behave well is vital for all pupils to succeed. And later on in this presentation, we will talk about teaching of behavior to children. Schools need to be continually working to maintain high standards of behavior. Um, that's again, like attendance, it's not something we achieve, it's something we continue to work on. Um, poor behaviour means that pupils can suffer from a range of issues and the document lists a few such as learning time is lost. Of course it is if children are disruptive in lessons. Um, children can feel anxiety, child and child abuse and, and, and other things. Um, and again, that reference to, to attendance, it can also cause children to stay away from school. But also, they've very for the first time they've made a reference to how poor behaviour, if not managed well, will have an impact upon the well-being of teachers and staff within your school setting. Um, they actually go on to talk about how teachers will leave the profession as a result of poor behaviour. Um, the head teacher must therefore lead the creation and reinforcement of positive behaviour, um, ensuring it permeates through every aspect of school life. 
this document provides a very um, clear focus and clear uh, guidance on leaders in your school setting. And I've made that very clear as I go through the, web, uh, through I go through the webinar. Um, it's not always made so explicitly clear, but I've broken it down so that you can see exactly what's required of leaders within your schools now as a result of this revised guidance. Um, like attendance, um, in order for it to be effective, um, it needs to be part of whole school life. It needs to be seen everywhere and the importance of it needs to be seen, seen everywhere. And of course, they mention this when they talk about um, every aspect of school life. I will spend quite a substantial amount of time on creating um, that whole school approach to, to good behaviour um, shortly. Staff training also sees a heightened focus in behaviour. Now, as I go through this presentation, you may put a tick across uh, across that point and, and, and feel that actually the school does training for staff on behaviour. We give them copies of the behaviour policy, we tell them about our sanctions um, and what should be done. Is that really what it is that's required now? Have a think about that as I go through. Staff should be trained to make sure that they collectively embody this school culture, upholding the school's behaviour policy at all times and responding to misbehaviour consistently and fairly. I've mentioned the word safe and how often and frequently it will come throughout today, today's presentation, but also throughout the document. Um, the word consistent and fair will also uh, be seen frequently. And so there's a real focus on ensuring that whatever the school chooses to do must be um, applied fairly. Children must feel that those sanctions are fair um, and that they there must be a consistent practice across all levels of the school um, community. So creating and maintaining high standards of uh, behaviour. 